it's Lisa. I'm here with an art journal page today, actually half of an art journal spread. I have done half of this and what I have used is some Avery laminating sheets with my jelly plate. And there are techniques out there, videos where people use packing tape and I, wanted, and I really like that and I wanted to do something with larger so I finally got around to ordering these laminating sheets. And what I did was I put in my journaling on my journal and then I did my laminating sheet and put it over the top. And um, um, on this one, I think I'm going to add some book paper and some other stuff down behind this to add some more layers to it. Um, but I have a sheet of laminating film out here. We'll have put that aside because we've got a little bit of work before we get to that. I have cut a piece of copy paper the size of my art journal, which is seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And what I want to do is to tear out a, a square of this because I'm going to need that. Let's just move this. For a moment. I'm going to need this square on my jelly plate kind of to hold things, to keep things from getting a paint on them, a mask. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, so I can come back over here to my journal and I can use this as a place to to indicate where I'm going to do my writing. So I'll probably put some washi tape and hold that down and then I'll write in what I want to say on this side of the journal. And then this piece is going to go on my jelly plate itself. Now I didn't do a super job of lining this one up. Not bad, but not quite as good as I wanted because you can see my, my laminating film didn't come all the way over here to the side. So we're going to try to do a little bit better job on this other one. But now that I've trimmed this down, I'll, it's not that noticeable to me. And I can see I've gotten a little crooked here with this, but that's okay. I don't mind that it's an odd shape. So we're going to take this and put it aside. And I'm going to take this and put it on my jelly plate. Let me just go ahead and put the whole thing down. When you are using laminating film or packing tape, it's not like doing regular jelly prints, where when you do a regular jelly print, what you put on there ends up being reversed. Like an alphabet, you would have to put the alphabet stencil upside down because it's going to end up being the reverse side, a mirror image when, it, when it's printed. What you see is what you get on these. Whatever colors and patterns you put down, that's what's picked up by the laminating film or the tape. All right, so we've got that. And so now I'm going to get some stencils and start going over this with some paints. The colors I have, I make it a little bit darker purple here in the pearl paint for the first layer. I have some reds and orange, and I have a little bit of green. And I'm going to do the same stencils and all as I did on that other one because I liked how it came out and it's going to match up in my book. I just may add a little bit more extra stuff and layers to it. So I'm doing a purple, a little bit darker one than I had before, and a light blue-green color on top of this stencil that I got at Hobby Lobby. The stencil came from back in the area where they keep uh, home stencils, not the scrapbooking area. And these Martha Stewart pearl paints have a wonderful glistening color to them. And the mixture of these make kind of a soft background but a little bit darker purple than we had um, before. And then I'm just going to run the rest of that off on a scrap sheet, and it makes a really pretty secondary print. Now this has to dry. That's the only thing about this particular method, is you have to let each layer completely dry. So you kind of need something else to do. <laughs> I did voiceovers for other videos, so it worked out. Now we're going to do some mix of some orange and red. Pearl paint, and then just a regular... Um, artist paint, uh, the heavy, I think it's a Liquitex heavy gel paint. And that stencil is one I cut from a design on the Silhouette store. And what I'm looking for up here at the top is sort of match my half circle to the other page that I created. And after that dries, then this stencil I found recently when I was going through some stuff, some old quilting stuff, and I bought this 
to use as a design, and I think I did use it to do some marking for actual hand quilting. I don't hand quilt anymore. My, my hands can't take it. So it's not going to get used, and I can't machine quilt this kind of design at all. <laughs> Best I can do with machine quilting is some straight line stuff. So um, I might as well use it in my craft room. And it makes some kind of fun lines on the jelly plate. The last step is to stamp some images just randomly here and there. And I saw this on another video where, she, and I, I'll have to hunt up whose it was um, and put a link. But she used these archival inks, and I don't think I would have ever dared using archival inks on my jelly plate, but they come right off. They just pull right off with the tape or with the, um, uh, in my case, the laminating film, and so they don't stay on there. Then, then you get some extra patterns and colors. And now we're ready to, I've gone ahead and put uh, some words on and I put some book paper as another layer in there. So what I'm doing, I've, and I've cut the piece of Avery down to the size of the journal page with just leaving that top. And I'll trim the top off and I'm trying to get it straight here and then pressing it down real firmly over the jelly plate to pick up all the paper. And I should have taken off the yellow piece first, the mask, but I didn't, and it's not a big deal. It still comes right off. I think I forgot that the f first one I did, first page I did as well. And then trying to make sure I have this lined up good. And this one went a lot better. And I was thrilled with how that circle design up there in the top came out. I did not expect it to come out that good, to line up that good, but it did really well. And I'm going to have some to trim off. Now you're probably thinking, you know, you could just put these stencils right on your paper. Why are, you know, why go through the jelly plate? You can. Um, but I really like using this. I just think it's a fun technique. You get this great um, finish to your page. So it's just something different and fun to use. And you could do it with a packing tape. You could cut up the Avery stuff in different designs. So now you can see the text on both sides. And it's a really cool page. It's got this great texture to it because of the shine. And I'll probably put my dates over here because I have this little blank space because I didn't write them anywhere else in here. And that finishes up this art journal page. And I like the darker purple. It showed up uh, a lot more. You get all the cool layers. There we go.